Obesity and unhealthy diets are major risk factors for cardiovascular disease and cancer that not only are the two top global killers, but also have a substantial impact on the economy. So far, interventions to make people eat better have generally been unsuccessful. They lead to positive changes in eating habits, but these don't seem to last over time. Why? Surely we all want to be healthier. Last year, I was really committed to lose some weight. My doctor told me to cut <coughs> off portion size fat and sugar. Did I lose weight? No, I actually ended up putting on weight despite my best intentions and my doctor's advice. Over the Christmas break, many of us have had too much to eat despite our best intentions and our doctor's advice. Indeed, with this type one size fits all type of advice, we can't curb obesity. Evidence suggests that with this type of interventions, on average, we'll lose three kilos over three years. So it works for some people, but not for all. So it made me wonder why doesn't it work for me? It must be that me and people like me make different choices from, the, from other people. So a good starting point to unpack this problem seemed to be to understand how people make decisions and identify the drivers of those decisions that might as well be different among different people. This is a daunting task because on average, we make 35,000 decisions per day to 121 of which are food related. So why do these differ across people? There must be something deeply rooted on individuals that makes it so hard for some of us to make the right choices. So these decisions are influenced by two things, our attitudes towards risk and our levels of self-control. And if we are different on our attitudes towards risk and levels of self-control, not only we act differently, but also we respond differently to interventions. So consider risk and uh, imagine that I flip a coin and I'll give you a choice between two options. Option A, if it's heads you get 12 pounds and tails you get eight. Option B, if it's head you get 20 pounds and if it's tails you get zero. On average, these two options give you the exact same return. Yet, if I would run a poll in this room, those that are risk averse would prefer A, and risk lovers would prefer B. So what determines these different choices are your preferences for risk. Imagine now that I give you a choice between a marshmallow in a year's time, or a box of marshmallows in a year and a week time. A substantial amount of people would prefer a box of marshmallows in a year and a week time. Now imagine that I bring this decision closer to the present by one year, and I ask you, would you rather have one marshmallow now or a box of marshmallows in a week's time? Now, while the rewards are exactly the same as in the previous scenario, those that lack self-control will eat immediately the marshmallow. So self-control really dictates the difference between our long-term goals and our short-term actions. If we differ with regards to our levels of self-control and your preferences for risk, then it's plausible to presume that these are going to affect the way we think about food. For example, our preferences for risk will dictate the extent to which we worry with developing diseases that are connected with our four food choices, and our levels of self-control will dictate the extent to which we will stick to uh, healthy food uh, choices. So in our research in, at Imperial College, we are mapping this diversity of behavioral types and trying to look at the relationship between these behavioral types and individual indicators uh, of nutritional balance to understand how to devise better policies to make people make better choices. When it comes to risk, we found that risk preferences tend to be robustly associated with food choices for men, but not for women. In particular, men that are risk averse tend to make better food choices than men that are risk lovers that tend to have poor nutritional balance. When it comes to self-control, those with higher levels of self-control, that is those that are less biased towards immediate gratification, tend to have better nutritional balance. So the implications of these results is that one size fits all type of, of interventions doesn't work and will never work because we all have different behavioral types. So going forward, we really need to leverage on these behavioral types and design personalized behavioral root prevention interventions. So for example, those that are risk lovers, we could reward them with lotteries if they lose weight. And for those that lack self-control, we can devise mechanisms through which they pre-commit to their weekly, their monthly, or their yearly food choices. Understanding individual behaviors can have an impact on health and the economy, but in order to enable that impact, we need to routinely measure our preferences for risk, our levels of self-control, and to embed these in the design of personalized prevention interventions. Thank you very much.